Now let us understand the rates involved in banking system. Let us first have a look at the banking system of India. Now all the banks in India comes directly under the Reserve Bank of India, that is the RBI. There are two major type of banks. One is the scheduled bank, the other is the non-scheduled banks. Now the scheduled banks are those who satisfy the Banking Regulation Act of 1965 and who has a working capital above 5 lakhs, whereas the non-scheduled banks does not fulfill the norms of the Regulation Act and their working capital is less than 5 lakhs. Now there are two types of scheduled banks, one is the commercial bank and the other is the cooperative banks. Now, the commercial bank can be a public sector bank like SBI, Orient Bank of Commerce and so on. Then we have private sector banks like ICICI, Axis, HDFC, the foreign banks. The foreign banks are those who has to fulfill the norms of the RBI as well as their host country. And we have regional rural banks. These are the banks which are established to reach out the people in the rural areas. The cooperative banks are usually used to fund small businesses. They can be either state or district banks. Well, once we understood the banking system, now let us understand different rates involved in the banking system. We have RBI, the bank and the customer. Now if the customer deposits some money in the bank, not all the amount goes to the bank's wallet. It has to give some amount of that money to the RBI. What is the exact amount that is to be given to the RBI? That is decided by the cash reserve ratio. So if the cash reserve ratio is 5% and the customer deposits 1000 rupees in the bank, then 5% of it, that is 50 rupees, goes to the RBI and the remaining amount goes to the bank's wallet. Now, once the bank has the money, it can think about earning money from it. How does it earn money? It gives away loans. Now, consider the situation where the bank gives away all the amount it has in the form of loans. It will earn some profit in few months. But if at the same time, the customer asks to withdraw his own amount, then the bank does not have any money to give. Hence, the bank could not give away all of its money in the form of loans. It has to invest some amount in the liquid assets. Now, what are liquid assets? It can be government bonds, it can be gold and so on. So, what is the amount to be invested in the liquid assets? That is decided by the SLR. Now, if the SLR is 20%, then the 20% of the amount which bank has, has to be invested in the liquid assets. And the remaining amount can be used by the bank for its daily expenses or for giving away loans. Now, if the customer asks for his money, he can sell the liquid assets to the RBI and get the amount to give it to the customer. If the customer does not ask for the money, the bank has to keep that invested amount as it is and it will also earn interest at some rate from its investments. Now consider a situation where the bank does not have enough money to meet its daily expenses or to give away loans. What it does, it calls up RBI and asks for some money. The RBI agrees to give the money but at a certain rate of interest. That rate of interest is called as a repo rate. Now, the loan can be for the short term or for the long term. The rate charged for the short term loans is called as a repo rate, where the rate charged for the long term loans is termed as bank rate. Once the bank has the money, it can now give away that money to their customers at loan. Now, bank has to earn profit. Hence, it charges more rate of interest on the loan than the repo rate. Now, if RBI decides to increase the repo rate, the rate of loan also increases. Whereas, if RBI decreases the repo rate, the rate of interest on the loan also decreases. Hence, by controlling the repo rate, RBI can control the amount which is there in the economy. Now, the minimum rate of interest which is charged by the bank to the end consumer is called as the base rate. The base rate is decided by the bank itself and not RBI. Now, consider another scenario. If the bank has excess money, it could decide to deposit some amount in RBI. In return, RBI pays some rate of interest to the bank. That is called as the reverse repo rate. So these are some important rates to understand in the banking system.